decided to take a little short break from my sanding roll work just to show how impressed I am with this new compressor setup for my tank. Um, and there again, I don't know all the details because I got this used. I just know that the plate information said it was 165 max PSI compressor pump. Of course, I had made it up with a different electric motor. But this thing absolutely kicks butt. I mean, we, <coughs> excuse me, we've mounted it on my old Craftsman 30 gallon tank. Um, it shuts off around 150, 155 pounds because that's what the regulator set up from the Craftsman was, you know, set up to do. And rather than go inside that little box and change anything, I wanted to run it and see how well it did. <clears throat> I can tell you I've been working for over two hours, almost two and a half hours straight today. Running my die grinder at 50, uh, I got the regulator set at 50 pounds. So I can just pretty much hold it wide open and do whatever I need to do. Fluctuate my, you know, trigger control. And right now it's sitting a little over 115 pounds of pressure. Yesterday I worked at three plus hours, almost three and a half hours. I never got the main tank uh, below 100 pounds of pressure. This thing absolutely kicks butt when it comes to uh, my porting, doing my porting work, running the die grinders and stuff like that. Um, hopefully, it'll be a vast improvement when I hook it up to my uh, sandblast cabinet because I do do some sandblasting work on intakes and small items. My old compressor absolutely could not keep up with the sandblast cabinet because it has to have 90 pounds of pressure or it, it just sucks. You can't even use this cabinet unless you're at 90 plus. So hopefully with my new uh, orifice size blasting gun and the new compressor setup, uh, we'll be able to rock out some, uh, I think we're gonna do a set of one and seven eighths tube headers here pretty soon for my friend's S10 and get it rolling. Um, I wanted to show you a quick update because then again, I'm not very good at showing process. Uh, these are those 241 LS heads. <clears throat> I wanted to show you guys how smooth an 80 grit finish is. Like, you know, I think people have a false representation of what they think 80 grit is. Because th this head is finished out, you know, exhaust ported 80 grit. And it's smooth. I mean, it's pretty doggone smooth. And that's just 80 grit finish. You know, and then I'll back up and it's going to be a little bit bright. But once I get to the port, it'll show you. This port is finished probably at 80% finished with 120 grit. And you can see the difference. I mean, it starts looking very organic. <laughs> And very smooth when you start getting to the 120 grit and really you know basically polishing the metal um, this head is I'd say probably about 80 percent done at 120 I have um, not flipped it over in 120 the actual bowl area yet I've just done the top and bottom of the actual port my goal today is to finish all that and then tomorrow, maybe later tonight or tomorrow, I'll do the finished flapper work on the intake ports because they're finished to uh, a rough 80 right now. But uh, I just wanted to show everybody the difference because in my previous video, I talked about the difference uh, between the actual port texture that people want to see and that how much better, sorry, how much better a port looks this 80 grit finish right here would absolutely just gleam if I bounce light through it you know what I mean when I look back or sorry let me step back when I look at this I mean you can see how shiny 120 grit finish is like if you look at the the outside of the ports because keep in mind I haven't done the bowl area yet but you look at that, man. 
especially this port here you know that starts looking like all those really cool ports you see on the internet but this is an exhaust port an exhaust port should be super fine finished intake port no way exhaust port rock it out get it as smooth as you want you can mirror polish it you're good to go and when you start working on the intake side you've got to be able to leave a little bit of a texture even if it's just that 80 grit texture you need to leave it on there so you can uh have good flow maintain your atomization and avoid any kind of puddling issues so anyway that's where i was at today um i did i was just thinking i'm going to end up finishing up these stupid heads and i'm not going to be able to show you how how's the texture you know show how the texture changes as you go from the double cut burr to the 80 grit then to 120 and then eventually i'll go to my scotch bright balls and to put a final you know kind of a polished finish on those exhaust ports so um, like i said i'll hit the i'll probably go over the intake ports with a little bit of a 60 grit and then do an 80 grit uh, flapper wheel finish and uh, should they'll be ready to ship out the door um, I'm pretty sure their customers coming to get these on Saturday sometime this weekend and I just want to make sure they're a hundred percent what he expects and what I expect them to be done because uh, basically your work speaks for itself if you send something out the door it looks like poop nobody's going to want you to work on their heads so i'll get these things finished up because right now we're just in the uh, cosmetic portion of the you know head porting and we'll be rocking and rolling i appreciate you guys watching hopefully you guys are having some fun and building some horsepower